I'm Lexi Hacko. I'm Jackson Hacko. I'm Sarah Sharp. We were lucky enough to be a part of a feature of various Canadian choirs at Carnegie Hall. Um, so we were one of six choirs that were invited to sing um, at Carnegie Hall in a mass uh, Canadian choir. So all of the choirs joined together to sing. Um, we got to sing six pieces that were all written by Canadian composers. So it was a very um, national patriotic sort of. And four of them were in the audience of the time that we were singing and they worked with us in the rehearsals. They like, wait, we stopped for them and then reply with something that we'd need to work on for their, like how they wanted it performed. Right. So. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not often do you get to actually work with the composers of the pieces, especially little, little choirs. <laughs> from the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so we arrived a few days prior to our initial first rehearsal. So that way we got a bit of time to take in some of the sites. Um, we got to attend a few Broadway shows, right? Do all the typical tour stuff, go to the Empire State Building, Rockefeller Center, things like that. Um, so it was nice that we were able to kind of do the tourist side as well as the performer side. Um, we were also lucky enough to have a lot of our family come with us um, to support us while we're performing at Carnegie. Um, but it was also a nice family trip as well that we got to kind of participate in. So that was really great to kind of start off the the week for us. It was a lot of walking, but it was really, <laughs> it was good though, because it got us out and just, I like, we didn't even know there was a TV in the hotel because we didn't spend any time in there. We were out so much, but um, I got to <laughs> I got to try New York pizza for the first time. And the piece was like double the size of my hand. It was huge, but yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's definitely a busy city. Um, there's always stuff to do. Um, so, you know, it was a, you know, get up at 8 a.m., do the thing all day, stay up late at night and repeat. So we took in as much as we could with the time we were given because we had a pretty um, rigorous, not rigorous, but an intense rehearsal schedule leading up to the performance. So it was nice to have a few days beforehand to take in um, some of the typical New York sites. Our moms have pretty... Um... Uh, intense itineraries <laughs> we never went in the front doors we got for the our dress rehearsal we went in the back so yeah the backstage door so we never got that grand reveal our grand reveal was walking onto the stage when no one was in the audience but it was still quite a cool thing because you got to do the whole backstage up the up six floors stairs <laughs> yeah they don't tell you this before you get there but the holding room for our choirs was on the fifth and sixth floors of carnegie hall so we had to hike up five or six flights of stairs to get to our holding room and then when it was time for us to do our sound check we hiked all the way back down those six flights of stairs and uh walked out onto the stage and it was it was like you know that your heart kind of stops and you just re-realize then and there kind of what you were doing and what you were leading up to because we had our rehearsals in the ballroom of the hotel so we never actually got to carnegie and walked in the space until it was time for a sound check which was about two hours before our performance um so yeah just kind of you're leading in the lines with the choir and you just kind of look and you just see all the seats and the lights and the beautiful auditorium and it's just it was truly you know kind of just like an oh my gosh i made it moment kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> It's it's hard to believe the fact that we got the opportunity to sing in there. Like it's and the performance that we did went by so fast. It's just I wish I could go back and do it again because it was just like we're on the stage for like forty five minutes and then we were off. It's just it went by so fast. And we did have an opportunity. I thought, I think it was really nice of them. We we switched spots with another choir after the intermission, so we got to sit in the auditorium and watch another performance. So that was also very cool. It was also awesome to see our name in a playbill. So, yeah. yeah, that was cool. And <laughs> on the big poster on the <laughs> card. Yeah. yeah. The Wind is My Shepherd was a piece written by Sarah Cortell. She's a pretty famous Canadian composer for choral music. And she was actually there, one of the ones who was there. And she is, you know, it's, it's one of those, you, you, you're in all these little choirs and you see the names. You don't really think too much of them. But when you, you're like, you realize you're actually seeing the person in person and they're giving you feedback on a song that they wrote just for this performance it mm. was pretty cool <laughs> yeah we also got to sing another piece um by a, a man named Corey payette um and it was called gimme quendina um and it was from an indigenous uh, musical that he had actually written and he was actually the soloist of the song so not only did he write the song but he was um the soloist and he kind of led us through this really powerful um drum section of the song and it was just such a like it goosebumps up your arms moment so that was really special 
um, to not only get feedback from these composers, but to actually perform with one of them was just truly like amazing. <laughs> it was part of a musical. Yeah. It took him 10 years to write. So that's. And the musical was uh, the children of God. It was about the residential school. It's a story about that. So. Yeah. One of my favorite songs was called Sing Cap Siaga. It's by a composer named Tracy Wong. For, unfortunately, she couldn't make it because her flight got delayed, but she was there for the performance. So we, she got to, we got that last minute kind of feedback on that. So that was, and she said, she just loved it. They all, they all loved it. They all loved us just singing their song. They just thanked us so much. It was awesome. Walking into the rehearsal space for the first time, right? There's 250 people. And the way they kind of had set us up in our seats was that we were mixed in with the other choirs. So you weren't necessarily sitting by someone you knew. Um, so you, you made fast friends with the people in your singing section, right? I had someone from Kitchener, Ontario on one side of me. I had someone from Toronto on the other, um, from different choirs, right? I had a row of bases beside me from Nova Scotia. It was like, <laughs> yeah. they were all random. So. I, had, I had old Tim beside me. He was, he was from a, a teacher's chorus in, was that Ontario? I think. Kitchener, yeah. Kitchener. Yeah. They were part of a teacher's chorus from Kitchener, but he was sitting beside me. His name was Tim. We got along very good. <laughs> yeah. But it was very cool to see like, you know, these choirs all across from Canada. Right. And we're all there for the same purpose. Right. Um, we've learned these pieces on our own. So to come together as a massive group of 250 people and perform them together um, was definitely a really cool moment um, to share with everyone in that rehearsal space. I could probably mention that there were six choirs. They were from New Brunswick. Two were from Ontario. One was from Nova Scotia, us from Manitoba, and Vancouver. Vancouver, BC. And some of them were high school choirs, but like pretty, like all age well, ranges. Well rounded high school choirs, not just our little Manitou four per people <laughs> ones. <laughs> but yeah, so, and so the youngest person there was in grade five, and the oldest um, probably was, I'm not sure how old, pretty old. 50, 60, <laughs> yeah. something like that. So we felt old being there because it was all like a majority was really young people definitely the fact that music can take you places that's kind of something that's been ingrained in us since we were you know walking right you know music is going to take you places someday and when you're from a small town and you sing in your local festival and your local choir you don't think of it much but the connections you can make along the way and you know saying you know we've sung at carnegie hall that's like you've made it as a singer essentially um, it's just really cool, especially being from small town Manitoba, right? You'd never think that we would make it that far. So to say that we got to experience that at such a young age too, um, that, you know, maybe one day we could experience it again. <laughs> it's definitely, um, something that doesn't, an opportunity that doesn't come by very often to small town kids like us. My best moment was just <laughs> like, just, just sitting in there realizing there are these conductors in front of us, just this is just what we're doing. And we're just, we're in Carnegie Hall. Like it's hard, it's hard to believe, but it, once we, once I was, I was like, yeah, this is, this is amazing. I would love to do it again. It was fun to work with such professional conductors. Like we work with Carrie Tennant and she was from, Vancouver. she, then she organized the choir in the Vancouver university, I think, or was it the high Vancouver school? Yeah. yeah. She organized the Vancouver youth choir from like nothing. So, and then she's, she's one of my idols. I just, just to see her in the flesh and get her to conduct us was just amazing. She, yeah, she had also conducted PHC one year, a few years back. So and we also had, it was cool to see her again. <laughs> also had Jamie Hill was our other conductor, and he was really great, right? Very um, to the point. And, you know, we only had three hours the first day, four hours the second day, and two the third day. So we didn't have a lot of rehearsal time as a group together. Um, so, you know, six songs with 250 voices that you needed to kind of blend and meld and make it performance ready. It's definitely a pretty intense performance window or rehearsal window, pardon me. Um, but you know, they were there to get stuff done and that's what we were there too. Right. So it's not like, you know, laid back. It was pretty intense, the rehearsal, but it was good because our performance was pretty top notch in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Talking about like those conductors were, they're like the top conductors in Canada for choral music and such. So it's, it's interesting to see, you know, the standard they hold for the choirs that they work with and to think that we're on the, in that standard. <laughs> I just like working with, I've worked with so many different conductors and each of, each of them have their own way of conducting. And I'm, as me being a future teacher, I'm just like, okay, hey, this is what they're going to do. And this is how I can improve on this. And this is a different way to look at it. Right. It, it's just so extraordinary seeing each conductor and each of their teaching ways 
to strengthen me as a musician, as myself and a teacher in the future. It's really cool when you get into the music community. It really is like a really small world, you know, like she said, the connections you make and you realize that everyone knows everyone. And it's it's a really interesting. Everyone has very similar interests when you get into something. So it's the music community. It's just like yeah. <laughs> you just instantly connect with people. Yeah. There's nothing quite like it. <laughs>